Hallelujah. Bless you. Bless you. God bless you. Surpass it, Lord. Amen. God bless you. Amen. At this time, we're going to have uh, we're going to have one final selection from the choir, uh, and then we will have our church announcements. And then the next speaking voice will be that of our pastor, Mr. Thomas L. Fowler, pastor of the Smyrna Church of Christ and the Apostolic Faith Incorporated. Let's give him a hand. Amen. Amen. We praise God for that. Amen.
Um, my uncle, um, Sylvester Penix, um, he will be funeralized on Tuesday, September 30, 12:30, at the Browns Chapel Church in Reedsville. We have quite a few on our prayers today. We have Sister Mae Wilson, Mother Graves, Dickie Turner, who is here, Sister Moorhead, Sister Broadnack, Sister Agnes Flagg, Sister Dale Lee, who says, praise the Lord. She's had issues, but she's coming back to the house of the Lord. We have Sister Latanya, who is home recuperating. We have Mother Horton, who is recu recuperating. She will be back in Greensboro soon. We have Johnny Carter, uh, Laverne Clark, Helen Clark, Keisha Clark, Monique Clark, Kimberly Cobb, Mrs. Lottie Thomas, and we had with John on the premise, but he is here today. We have uh, youth counselors on staff for those students who need assistance in their studies. You can contact Ella Miller. Again, the church phone is 336-342-2217. We are so happy to have with us today um, Miss Anna Wilson, Miss Sierra and Seth Galloway, and uh, William Martin. If, if you all would just stand and just wave your hands. So good to have you all today. Please come back and worship with us again. We had senior rehearsal on last week. We had a very good rehearsal, and again, we're going to call another rehearsal again on next Thursday at 3 o'clock, unless otherwise announced. We would like to say happy birthday to Sister Bertha Moorhead, which is September the 2nd. She is not here today. And we have um, Brother Davis Fowler. Someone gave him a card on this morning for his birthday, and he said, well, what is September? I said, it's your birthday. He said, boy, I'm really getting old. <laughs> September the 14th. And we have Taisha Dickerson, September the 20th. Where are you, Taisha? Okay. Say so happy birthday to you all. And also, I don't know how many years, but we want to say happy anniversary to Carl and Sister Brenda Gwynn on September the 18th. <laughs> Each Wednesday, 5.30 to 6.30, Bishop Fowler is in a systematic Bible study in the Book of Revelation. We would like you to come out and take part in this study each Wednesday afternoon, 5.30 to 6.30. Announcements for the coming week. On next Sunday, September the 8th at 3.30 p.m., Bishop Cleve Adams and his congregation will be here from Jerusalem Weather the Cross Church. Their service will begin at 3.30. And Sister Nolita, um, is asking all the ladies if you could please bring a special offer of $20. We will be in charge of that service. And the brothers, if they could please follow us. Announcements, and also on Sunday, September 15th, we're scheduled to go out to the amazing Bible Way Church in Clarksville, Virginia. Announcement advance Thursday, October the 3rd um, through October the 5th will be our 2019 Founders and Homecoming Celebration. Our chairperson will be Elder John Carlos Miller. Inspirational quote of the month, when God takes something from your hand, don't think he is punishing you. He is really emptying your hand for you to receive something better. Have faith. And we have another birthday. We have Bella Turner, which is the 26th. And little brother Raphael Turner, the 20th. Where are they? Where are they? Stay. Next, to your friend announcements in mind, and Governor you says the one. Praise the Lord. As you heard, uh, Sister Fowler give the announcement about. Uh, our homecoming service is happening October the 3rd through the 5th here at the Smyrna Church. Uh, now, I'm asking you all to, to please pray much for me. Uh, this is the first time I have done such a thing. You know, the, the pros uh, 
like uh, the pros, like you know Deacon Turner and others who have done this in the past, Sister Fowler and them, you know, there's a really sister, hey, and sister Tasha, and this is really there's some huge shoes to fill. Uh, however, we're going to do the best we can. Thus said the Lord. Amen. 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 With that being said, um, I would like to uh, meet with if you have an interest in being a part uh, of helping to finalize or put the things together for that homecoming, our homecoming services on the 3rd through the 5th of October, please see me just right here real briefly after service uh, for about five minutes right here at the, on this side. Uh, and we'll touch base with you on some things about the homecoming service, amen, for October the 3rd through the 5th. Of course, you know that on that, uh, that Sunday uh, is when our own pastor, Mr. Fowler, uh, will be closing out the homecoming service. We certainly want you to be a part. Uh, I want you to you know, sit in prayer for this homecoming service that the Lord will be a, that the Lord will bless us. Amen. That the Lord will continue to bless this Smyrna church. Amen. For years to come. Amen. 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 God bless you. Also, to our youth and our youth parents. We know a lot of our youth just completed their very first week of school. Uh, now, those youth who uh, I have numbers for. Uh, you should have gotten a text message from me, either it went to your specific phone or it went to your mom's, dad's, or guardian's phone. If your mom and dad didn't tell you, I sent you a text. You need to tell them, ask them, why didn't you tell me Elder Bella text me? You need to ask them. And some of you didn't respond to my text message neither. Now, I ain't going to call no names. Uh, 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 a little time on Jimmy, but uh, I ain't call no names, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing. I'm messing. I'm messing with you. But anyway, I thank God for, for our young people. If I do not have your number, if you did not get a text from me, please see me today. Better yet, please see Sister Miller today so that she can get your number uh, and so we can add your number to the list because I want to keep in touch with you. We, as a youth advisors, we want to keep in touch with you to know how things are going. I do have, uh, for those that are interested, on next well, this coming Saturday uh, in uh, where is it? Durham. Yeah, it's in Durham. This coming Saturday in Durham, North Carolina, my North Carolina A&T State University Aggies will be taking on the Duke Blue Devils in the football game. Now, if you are interested, and I don't know why y'all laughing. Y'all laughing like y'all like like y'all think we ain't got a chance to win, but. I beg to differ. Y'all remember East Carolina University last year down in Greenville. We beat them. Uh, but anyway, uh, we're going to Duke, and we plan on coming back with a win. And if we don't, well, it just wasn't in the Lord's will. <laughs> so I'm a winner anyway. <laughs> Amen. But we do have some tickets if you want to go. And these tickets have already been paid for. If you're interested in going, then please see Sister Miller before you leave church today. If you're interested in going, it's in Durham uh, Saturday at 6 p.m. We'll make sure you get there. I don't know. We may have to open up the house, Sister Miller, for some of the young folks to stay on next Saturday evening. But it's all good. Amen. So if you're interested, let us know. We'll let her know. Amen. And we got a ticket for you. And it's also got a little food voucher in it too. <laughs> say, you know they're going. <laughs> Amen. And that's for parents, too. Parents, if you want to accompany us, then by all means, please feel free. Amen. God bless you. Now, I'll turn it over to the capable hands of our pastor, Bishop Thomas Fowler. Stand to your feet. Give God some hand praise for this man of God, our pastor, Bishop Thomas Fowler. Young people take advantage of this educational process that they're trying to help you. Don't wait till the last of the year to try to make it. You need to start working now. And the SAT, ACT tests, don't start in your senior year. Start early. Because a lot of scholarship money, they even found that out. Going to private college, it costs you a lot of money. So the higher you score, the better you are, and uh, because it's very, very expensive. 
So take advantage and learn as much as you can because there's a lot of opportunities out there. A lot of opportunities. I was talking to uh, my cousin. He's a one of the kind of up with the Ford Motor Corporation. He's over top of the world's computer systems for Ford Motor Company. And the office of uh, apprenticeship program during the summer. So he's got Davis in mind. So Saint is good to know people that can help you. It's good. Be friendly. Be friend. You want friend, be friendly, right? So there's a lot of people can help you, but you can't walk around arrogant, head in the air like you're big and bad and all that. Stay home. Well, bless you. Because there's a lot, there's a lot of opportunities out there. Dr. Miller and his wife, they're trying to help all young people. Not one of the young people in this church should fail any grade. Amen. You should be on top of your grade. Amen. Because you have people here that can help you. Amen. Amen. We want you to uh, for a short span of time look at the book, uh, be in the book of, I mean not the book, but Psalms 40. And I went to Psalms. I went from 2 Samuel 11 chapter to Psalms 4, I don't know what happened there. But saints, we need, we need to be serious about our walk with the Lord. All these things are happening today. You could be at the mall, you could be going to school or going to work. But these, you got some people out there crazy. They don't mind. Shoot up the place. And most of my young men, young men that the devil have got onto their minds and their spirit. It's destruction. You know, the enemy don't have to come over to anything in America. Now we're destroying ourselves from within. And the, these these are some peerless. I mean it's just peerless time. The Bible spoke about these peerless times. But we got to pray. Pray for your nation. Even if you didn't vote for your president, pray for them. That's right. Then pray for those. The Bible says that. That's right. Pray for those in leadership. Pray for those. And when I wrote the polls <laughs> before he got in, some people said they wouldn't go vote. They don't vote. And I thought, of, I said, you mean tell me you don't vote, won't vote, I'll leave. People have died for you to have a right to vote. Yes, Had to get, they gave them, they gave them tests. They failed a the test. They couldn't vote. All the things, dogs, and water holes, and lynching, and all kinds of stuff went on. And you won't vote. What's wrong with you? And that person's really had just, just I just couldn't understand why anybody in their right mind don't have won't, won't vote. Don't want to vote and don't care about them. That's a sad thing. But these are educated folks, not just anybody off the street. But they feel like what their vote don't count. Your vote count, every vote count. Whoever you vote for, vote. Get out there and vote for the person of your choice. He said, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. In other words, prayer. He brought me up also out of a harbor pit, out of the marry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my going. And he has put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Men shall see it and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust. And respect not the proud, nor such an eternal side to lies. See, like what lying man is a normal. See, like a lying man is this uh, thing people do. And, and it seems like they're trying to compete who will tell the best lie. Yeah. Who can convince folks? Uh, and you know, and people get on these different social media and, and challenge people. To do different things. If you, can, if you can't challenge me to do nothing. People throwing water on folks and all kind of crazy stuff. I mean, why would you let folks challenge you in anything? 
You don't have your own mind? So the devil is busy saints. He's working on He's not going to the old folks, but he do He figured either the Lord got him or the devil got him. So he ain't worried about the old folks. But he's trying to stop a generation of believers. He tried to put a stop on young, young minds. He tried AIDS, LSD, drugs, illicit sex, all this stuff the devil tried and tried to wipe us out. And, and, and the sad part about it, 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 it's like it's geared to people of color. Like they're trying to get rid of us. But you know, I like to say, old folks, you say, we just like roaches. We just keep on, keep, keep on coming. The more you kill a roach, the more he comes. You try to figure where it comes from. That's what we're, God has protected us down through the years. Amen. Through all the stuff that we've been through. He is keeping us, saints. We are God's chosen folks. If we were God's chosen folks, you never would have made the passage across. You would have died on the sea and the lake ocean trying to get here. But we still survive. They drop some off on different islands. Well, they're not there on those islands. Not like yesterday today, the 1700s, 1800s. Well, they're not there but animals. But they put us out there. We cultivated it. And we survived on nothing but rock. Grew things. Make things happen. You all you see in these islands now, you built them. Your folks built those islands. You didn't know that, did you? When them ships came in, they dropped some all along the way. But you survived. It's what you God free. You are a survivor. No matter what the enemy trying to do, you are a survivor. We didn't, have, we didn't know the language. We didn't know the culture. We had no knowledge of what we were dropped off, sickly, weak, but we survived. Many women came and had birth. Well, no birth, uh, no doctors, no anesthesiologists, and all like that. They had natural birth. All that they went through. Some died in childbirth. Yeah. All the things that we went through. And you got it going on now. And you won't go to school. You don't want to learn. You don't want to listen. You want to walk around your pants hanging down. You walk around in a hat cut, in a shave, and a bag. And you think you got it going on. Think about your forefathers, what they've been through, and what they got for you to be able to go to school. There were no dudes you can go to in Carolinas and Wake Forest. You couldn't go to those schools. You had an HBC school, all day you could go. And you couldn't get a master in the state of North Carolina. You had to go out of state to get a, 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 a master's law, PhD, Chicago, Michigan, Ohio. So all these things have changed for you with no grants. You worked, uh, you worked on the campuses, you worked in the lunch room, you worked cooking or whatever. You could do on campus to, uh, to make a, a pay for your, your tuition. There wasn't no loan back then. But look at you now. You got all kinds of loans. And, if, and people coming from all over the world taking advantage of what you should be taking advantage of. We don't own no commercial stores anymore. You don't own any restaurants, very few. Hotels, but well, back then we had our own hotel. They might have been kind of messed up, but we had our own. But now we don't have anything. Our mom and pop stores in the corners, they're gone. The drug stores in our neighborhoods are gone. Our doctor's office in our neighborhood. We do our doctor, we do our principal, we do our school, we all live in the same community. But Irvin Nero came through and moved the wealthy blacks away from the poor blacks and they separated them within our own ranks. So all this stuff people don't want to think about. So I lived through those times in the 50s. And I saw the transition. And I saw what was happening. They dumbed us down. They didn't value education. They said public school was no good. They didn't open up private school, child school. They were doing that to keep you from having education. But you got to go back to, to the old schools. Children taught the other children. The parents couldn't even read. Did y'all know that? The siblings taught the older siblings taught the young siblings how to read and write. And they got kids then in the fifth, sixth, seventh grade can't even read and write. But back in the old days, you taught. My mama couldn't read, but she said, tell that boy what this word is. She didn't know herself. But she would tell the children, to teach the children, how to read and write. So say, you have no excuse. How do I get on that? Go back to the word. But so I want to bring folks out to reality. We go to church, we jump and shout, have a good time, and we leave broke. We sing and just have a great time. But do you, can you go get a decent job? Do you have training? 
The, the bedrock of the church was the training. That's what the, these seminaries, these schools came out of. It's kind of the churches. And they taught you in church how to be a good citizen, how to be a good person, how to achieve. When we walk the street and march for you to get a better job, protest against coal mills and brown industries, all these the preachers did that. That's what everything started. But now we don't want to go to church. We want to sit at home and watch TV. Be on computers. But the church was the foundation of the community. That's what got people where they are today. Was the church. This is where the strength is. You look around you, we got a lot of, we got a lot to see 800 people here. But the pews are empty because people don't value a church anymore. This is a valuable resource, saints. When I came here from Michigan years ago, 1976, I had a good job and I had no sense. Lost a lot of good jobs for the government, whatever. But just I got wild and crazy. But when I got here, got and, and got on the teaching of the, the man of God, got become a member of this church, I began to see the other side of what I could be. Right. Somebody look at your neighbor side, look at what you could be. <laughs> Not where you are today, but look what you could be. But through the through the, the teachings and instruction of the, the pastor, how to be men. How to shave, get a haircut, how to look presentable. When well, you do look for a job, don't go any kind of way. That's and you got an old car, clean that old car, make it look nice. Yeah. And you know, we came to the house of God. We didn't have a lot, but we one thing we had. We had each other. And we had power. They were praying for all the children. We didn't have uh, answers here like Dr. Miller and in the church. We didn't have something they didn't even have, no more than a high school education. But they taught young people in Sunday school how to live holy. How to be re responsible. How young men, how to treat their wives. This was valuable teaching. Because I came out of the world. I said, Lord, thank you for being in a small community. Left four or five million people come down to about 1,900. I mean, 19,000, very small community. And it was kind of different for me. They didn't want to accept me because I'm from somewhere else. They gave me kind of a hard time because they thought I was a pimp or a hustler. See what I'm saying? When you come in, people always want to judge you. But stop judging folk and let folk prove themselves. We always want to say, you're not going to be saved. You're going to be gone. Leave folks alone. I've been there 40-some years. They said, I'll give you six months. You'll be gone. Don't you ever count anybody out. Because the same one you count out, you may need one day. So I give God a praise. I know what I'm talking about saying. By them embracing me and loving me, I stayed here and I, and I became uh, to move up and begin to prosper because of the teaching. Sometimes I didn't take, pastor don't take that job because you missed church. I didn't take a certain job and he told me what to do. I went to insurance, I sold insurance, I went all over the industry, I created a whole market and I had six states I covered. I traveled, I made a lot of money, I made a lot of friends, I did very well, but I got the big head. And I got beyond myself because of that. it was grand doses, it was just grand. And then you, you know, you had to watch the system up because when you, people spending millions of dollars for this, that, and the other, and you enjoying the benefits, you get puffed up. And Lord had to bring me down. God will stick a pin in you. Yeah. And so remember where you come from, son. Amen. See, but my things were going good. You know, I, you know, still doing good, but I mean, not like that. I mean, you know, when you can fly out of the country, you got a Red Express gold car, people don't even understand that. And then the free gas, free cars, uh, clothes account, money, travel. See, you ain't used to that kind of stuff. But when that stuff gets you, baby, it's hard to control. Amen. It's hard. That's why people say athletes become uh, billionaires, billionaires lose their money, because they're not used to it. Amen. You're not taught in college how to have the money. They just teach you to go to school. Get an education, get a job. They don't tell you how to get a career. It's a difference between a job and a career. So, now all this to say this, I had to wait on the Lord. I had to be patient. I had to follow instruction. I had to be willing to submit to the authority. I had to be governed and controlled by the ones that love me. You know, and I had to learn to be patient when we lived in a government housing. And we lived there. Uh, and it was a great place, but I, 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 I was trying to get into a better place. Even when I was in the government project and I was working, 
I, I, I saw that I, I said, Lord, this is not uh, uh, where I want to be, but this, I thank God for, for what you put me in this place. But, you know, we have to be um, up, uh, mobile, up and moving. Young people, don't ever get stagnant in your place. I don't care whatever you have in life, all we be trying to strive to do better. And if you don't do better, uh, you can't help anybody else. But young people saw what I was doing. They asked me, how do you get where you are? And I explained them what I did. And they, some of them followed that pattern, and they're doing very well. Say, so you got to follow yourself by somebody. you got to pick out somebody in the church, do some positive things, some great things, and get behind them and say, well, how'd you do this? How'd you do that? And, and my wife went, went to ran a uh, medical office. She had about eight, nine women. She had a headache all the time, no women. <laughs> they were always fighting them and crazy. You know, eight women in the office is kind of like in a war zone. <laughs> she had a referee, you know. But God, she didn't want that position, but God put her in that position. She kept turning it down. I said, don't turn it down. Take it. Try it. And she retired from it. She said, opportunities will come. But you got to be patient and wait on opportunities. Don't get the big head. Don't be switching jobs every day. Look around. You switching jobs. You couldn't here trying to run and chase them because you want money. More money. Stay where you are. Let God bless you. God increase your income. Say it. Be committed to something. Every opportunity is not always the best opportunity. So we got to be patient. Psalm 4 began. He began with the highlight, high, uh, the high uh, flight of thanksgiving, the end of the mixture of prayer, lamentation. Furthermore, uh, the last five verses, Psalms 40, uh, he's talking about the association and suffering throughout the psalm. He was a suffering man. He went through a lot of persecution. And, and, and that's why, you know, if you're not in lamentation, he was, he was a lament. He was in a, a bad place. I mean, he was going through something. And say when you get to a place that you don't have thanksgiving and you don't give God thanks. And you know, some people are so, they don't thank God for anything. They bow down and thank God for the food they eat. But you ought to thank God for the house you have, the food you have, the clothes you have, even the family you have. Thank God for the church you have. I mean, you got to be thankful, saints of God. You, you, you cannot appreciate things unless you know what thing, how things come. You know, a lot of young people don't know that a, a cow is beef. They don't know it. And they think you just go to the grocery store and buy a steak. But that somebody had to raise that cow. Somebody had to kill that cow. Somebody had to free the package and carry it to the market. But young folks think now, all you do is go to the store and get it. It don't work like that. A loaf of bread. Somebody got to plant it. They got to grow it. They got to harvest it. They got to uh, process it. Put it in a bag and send it. In the soul. So everything has a process. Your life is a process. You're not going to get from, from one to a hundred all by yourself. You're going to need some help along the way. You need somebody to grab you and say, look, son, daughter, you need to slow your road. You're going the wrong way. So many young people I see want to put lipstick on baby. Get that lipstick off that child. Try to make them look like that child like a grown woman. Take them high heels off that young girl. Let them grow up. Young men say, little man, he ain't no little man. He's a little boy. He's about to grow up. You watch that movie, Little Man, and you put your son in a little man's status. He's not a little man. He's your son. Somebody give God a prayer. And they took all this stuff out of Hollywood. He was about to, and, and, and mess our children up. And these young boys want to be men before they're men. Having babies 13, 14 years. You don't, you, you're, not, you're not a man yet. But you will be a man when you get to paying that child support. I don't know this stuff. So you got to slow your roll, young women. And young men, yes, sir. trouble is all around you. Jails are full of smart young men. Their lives are messed up because of trying to get ahead too fast. Take your time. You got a family? Work. Take care of your household. Do what you got to do, young people. You marry a woman, you got to take care of her. Your obligation, not your mom and your daddy, right. is your obligation to take care of your family. Whatever it takes. I used to walk from Walmart Court to Holiday Inn up a long walk. Because I had a family. Well, I, I don't have a car, I can't look for no job, get out there and walk. I did it, you, you know better than me. In the cold, in the heat, I had to walk until God made a way. But now I can ride, but I had to pay the price first. 
And people look at you because you're doing all right now, but they don't know what. You don't know your story. They don't know what you've been through to get where you are today. Somebody had to pay a price. Jesus paid a price. So we're saying to me, we have to teach our young people. Dr. Miller was talking and he, and he explained some things, told me some things that was really uh, great. He, and the teacher was teaching his family and the process. And, you know, things just don't come easy because you, you live in a nice home. Somebody got to pay for that house. Somebody got to pay those bills. Somebody got to pay for the car you ride in. So all these things are, are, are costly. And, and, and somebody have to do the work. You know, when we grew up, I don't know me, I'm old, excuse me, expression, not old, but I'm well at age. We used to sell soda bottles to buy candy. We used to walk, we used to walk the, the ditches through the mud. You know, you know, back in the old days, they had trenches in the mud. When it rained, all the mud got in the trenches. And we would walk, pick up bottles and sell bottles and get candy or whatever we do. Go work at tobacco. I worked one day and tobacco didn't keep me out because like, they said Brown, I was pulling it off. <laughs> I was pulling the back. No, you don't do it. But and, and, and tobacco, uh, uh, regular leaves, we did all that to, to make some money. Our parents weren't gonna give you no money. You had, and then when you made the money, where's the money at? And they would take most of the money and give you a couple of dollars. You didn't keep all that money. But all that we've been through, it made us who we are today. It made us responsible people. And say, take care of your household. Love your wise men. Amen. Love your own wife, Bible says. Not somebody else's wife or somebody. Love your own wife. Take care of your family. I can't love her but one woman. I maybe can run around with another woman. I can't love a woman. But I thank God for God. Let me know. You got the best thing going. My wife has been ahead had all these years. Got her when she was 23. And now she's a few years, you know, older. But she's still the same woman. She's still the same woman. Amen. See, see, you got to realize, say, don't you want to trade what your wife is because she's up in age? You up in age too. You ain't look like you did in 18 either. Right. So take a look in the mirror. <laughs> it says, your hands get thin, your stomach's sticking out, got big gun. And she calls, she's not a five or six in, uh, in a dress. She's a baby in 18. That's all right. You in a, you in a 48 when you was a 28 in your way. So it ain't, you, you ain't looking too good either. <laughs> take a look in the mirror and look at yourself. In the right corner. So folks run around and say, so I want a young woman. You better you the Bible call you a fool. That's right. Fool said, there's no God. But we got to realize, say, you got to wait patiently for the Lord. And he inclined and he heard my cry. He brought me up also a heart pit. So I was talking about the heart pits we get in the life. I am Margaret Clay and set my feet upon the rock and established my goal. Before God can do anything for you, Saint, you got to go through some things. You got to go through some trouble. You got to go through some hard things. You got to go through some life, Saint. You going to say, Lord, help me. I can't make it by myself. I've been there, Saint. When I didn't know how to buy bread, Lord, help me be able to make some money. I, I, I went to the social service one time in my life. And I, I, I need it just to my check came. I said, well, give me a few dollars. I can give it the call back then. They said, well, well, sir, we can't do it. I said, miss, I said, I'll tell you what. I've been working since I was, since 1963. It was like 78, something like that. And I said, I put a lot of money in the system. Been in the military. And I said, you mean, Tim, you can't give me $20 on Monday food stamp? She said, no. I said, okay. I said, I will not be back. And don't you know, when I left, she, she, I think, I don't know what happened. Anyway, I never went back anymore. But the moral story is, sometimes you got to rejections to get better. So that rejection calls me not to depend on somebody else to do what I need to do for myself. See, once you become dependent on something, 
You expect it. Mm -hmm. I tell you one thing, you never stop messing my my social security check. I already saying it too. Hey man, I went a long time to get that one. But the, hey, that's right. It used to be called Mother's Day, but it's not, hey, Daddy, hey, man. Hey, man. What about that check? You want to get somebody mad? That check will be in the bank. They be calling Pastor Craig. My check ain't there. My my what's it called another thing? EBT. What do we call that My EBT card is not there. Pray for me, man. I'm supposed to get crazy. If it's the third of the month, the second, whatever that money's supposed to come. Hey, postman, where's my check? <laughs> you know, put them in the check one. They put it in the bank right now. But anyway, saints of God, you see how far we've come. The system has got us depending on the system. But thank God for the system, because I tell you, big help in the same. Yeah. Don't stop my chain. You can think stop me over. Ain't the right side? But what, anybody that knows the check, stop raising your hand. <laughs> no, you don't. Man, I worked too hard for that little check. Should be getting more. Hey, yeah. man, we were raised. We get raised this year to 1.6%. Cost living rate. I keep up with cost of the too. I want my check. <laughs> well, you saved. Yeah, I'm saved, but I still want the check. <laughs> Duke Powell ain't saved. Duke and I ain't saved. <laughs> Gas companies ain't saved. They want some money. That tank needs to, he don't say how little thing you raise your hand, pray for me on that gas tank. He said, put the car in. I'm going to pay the cashier. You ain't getting no gas today. And the check and the car ain't right, you don't get no gas. So hey, 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 you gotta get real safe. You need some money. And young people today have more than one stream of income. Have you more than one stream of income. If you work on a job, get you something else on the side so that money come and sell something. You got all kinds of stuff you can sell, and make money now. Make yourself rich. Bob's saying make you rich and add no salt. How more when you retire, you should have these four forms of income. Not depend on one system. I re when I retired, I made sure I had more than one income. Because I worked at it. And I said, I don't want to be walking around living for hand to mouth. Not being to buy my wife a dress when she wanted a dress. Not being to care on a trip. Wondering when she wanted to go on a trip. Me and Dick Jones was talking, he was talking about God bless. Saints, God will bless you, but you got to put in the work. You, it ain't going to fall out of the sky. <coughs> Young people, I work, I travel. Sometimes I was going three or four days a week. My wife kept the kids. As I traveled, but I had to provide for my family. Amen. I've been to Philadelphia on a trip and go back the same day, go back to Philadelphia. Don't got just to even pack. But it was a sacrifice I had to make because I know one day it's going to come retirement time. But I had to, I had to do everything I could do for my family while it changed. And I retired at 55 years old, very young. I haven't worked since. But I had to work hard all those years. Pay my tithes. Give to the church. Be, uh, be to the pastor. And, and all the things he told me uh, and shared with me. And he was the hardest. My dad in law like he hated me. Seemed like he was the hardest man in the world on me. I could do nothing right. Amen. I could, <laughs> but he was making me. He was shaping me to be a man. See, men, you can't treat men like girls, like ladies. Men, you got to be hard on men. Amen. Women, if you're ready to do something, don't, be a, don't make them a little wimp, a little sissy. You make them a man. Amen. Make them more to y'all. It's hot out there. No, it ain't hot. Why that more to y'all more? Break the leaves. See, you make them, you make them wimp out there. They let watch the video all day. And that's what we do all this life, watching video. 50 years old, her mama baby a biscuit. <laughs> Mama, you didn't buy no groceries. 50 years old, still playing video. You got to start them kids. Get them out of that house. Make a man out of them. My mom and them, boy, you could come in that house. You could open that refrigerator. You could come in that house. It'd be cold outside. We used to sit on the other side of the house the wind wasn't blowing. We knew better go in that house. <laughs> That's right. We, we used to sit 
set up the side of the house and the sun was going to win the morning. You couldn't go in that house. When they come in to eat, you came in to eat, then you go back out that place. We're no lounging. That's what made you a man. You got men that are so soft, fingernails long. They look like little girls. We didn't have no fingernails. We done gnawed them all out there playing and stuff. We're no such thing as no fingernails. Amen. We came up that way. See, now boys got pretty fingernails, get them polished and get the hands trimmed. Sometimes you go old mama that haircut, be looking shaggy, but we had to do what we had to do because parents didn't have no money. How do I get on this, y'all? Sorry about that, uh, Sister Chris. Uh, yeah, I'm going old school. Sometimes young people need to know how things happen. Things just don't, mama just didn't fall in the house. In the refrigerator just to get food. Somebody had to put some food in that refrigerator. My dad used to bring groceries on Saturday. We get to eat the hot dogs, have with all the man. We had a party going on. Ice cream. Me and my cousin Dwight all of us was in the house. All the good stuff had gone on Saturday night. Then back to being on Monday morning. <laughs> But they told me, Saturday was the grocery day. And man, so they, see, y'all have groceries every day. You used to go shopping. But back then, there wasn't no shopping every day. They brought that food in on the school last all week. And man, we'd be back eating pinto beans again, cornbread. Because we were so excited about having hot dogs and hamburgers. Stuff like that. We didn't get it that much. But now people eat. I mean, anything they want to have. Mama, I don't eat that. And Dad, I don't eat this. I don't like that. I don't like that. Man, if we didn't get home before uh, my big brother got home, you didn't get no way. Because they get around the table, Mama cooked the Japan and missed about that long, had a pot of pinto beans. And all the big brothers get around that table, after I'm small now, they push me away. <laughs> Eating up everything. And, and that's the way it was. If you didn't make it home, if they said, come on eat, if you didn't make it, you don't eat. You have what was left. So those are the things that young people need to understand what your grandparents and great parents went through to get you. You should never say, Brother Hall, I don't like that. Whatever mama put before you, eat it. Amen. Even if you don't like it, eat it anyway. Because it's going to come with something, it's going to come a time, and you're going to say, well, my mama made me eat it, the boys, up and my children, they eat it. But see, we make kids, now we make them like little babies. Well, he don't like that. He don't eat this. What do we eat? Well, he like french fries and chicken nuggets. What is a chicken nugget? Chicken don't have no nuggets. <laughs> and buffalo, buffalo don't have no wings. <laughs> What is a chicken nugget? <laughs> they got smart. They took the worst part of the chicken, processed and made nuggets, took the wings and sold the wing place to sell wings. And wings, I went one place, wings looked so big, I thought, oh, uh, uh, what kind of wing that wing was that far? <laughs> that wing got so much steroid in it, it can fly by itself. And then our kids are suffering. Say so we didn't, I, I'm, I'm going to change it a minute. We didn't go to the doctor, maybe if you had. You had to be real sick to go to the doctor back then. I mean, you had to be real sick. You had an awful day. You know what I mean? You were real sick if you went to the doctor. And they would, my dad would fix something up, and you would take it, and, and it would probably be, you. The kids never took what we took, we did. <laughs> really, we did. But it, we got well. I remember Paris got a fever 103, he was sick. And they put an onion on his sock. And it broke that fever. The onion was cooked, but the fever was broke. And we had carried the 
hospital one day, put him in a, a whole bucket of ice. But he was sick, out delirious, and we put him in, and, he, and we, that, that onion was just, Mother Grace, I put an onion on his foot and then baked him. They used an old remedy that didn't work. But now kids, they, they, they got to lift weights, they got to eat certain things. All we did was go outside and carry logs and cut wood. We had muscles. You cut a load of wood, you got muscles. You carry a sack of uh, fit for a lot, you have muscles. You didn't need no weights. Your weights were that work outside. Get that wood cut, get that house warm. And, and you got to make sure the wood was cut. Because the next morning the house will be cold and you will be cold. It wasn't going to turn the heat on, on, on what you call it, thing, that was something awesome. You had to go out there, right? Just near, you had to go cut that wood. Amen. So all these things that we did, so you can have a better life. And then you're going to go to school and you're going to clown and act up. And your mama did so much for you. I remember one time, Mr. Uh, I don't think his name now, he's dead now. But anyway, we was picking this little girl at school. And so, she told the teacher, the teacher told, call my mother. So what happened? And back then they would take these paddles, you know, these sorority paddles, they call them fraternity paddles. And the fraternity paddle had the initial fraternity in that paddle. And he would say, right on the board, he would say, watch the bird. And the boy, he would tear us up. That would be, be child abuse now. But they used to do that back then. Amen. But I never forget those. But when I, my mother came, I told my mother what I had happened. She said, he did that to you? I said, yes, ma'am. So you know how old women do you They get the hat in the pocketbook. <coughs> you had the hat in the pocketbook when we went to school. She came to school. So uh, Mr. Fowles was his name. Mr. Fowles came in the office. Mr. Fowles said, spoke to my mother. And I teach told him what had happened. He said, Ms. Fowles, I would never do that. And she looked at me and she said, son, did you lie to me? Boy, I had to tell the truth. I said, yes, ma'am, I lied. She said, well, okay. Mr. Fowles got you. I'm going to get you when you get home. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, those things you never forget. The, you never, still kids don't have no experiences now because you can't touch them anymore. That's why the kids are fighting the teachers. Uh, I mean, there's no respect for the teachers, and they want to teach them, uh, teach them to protect themselves, then they in trouble. I mean, all, and then the resource officer come in, and then he got this little girl, little boy down. You see these Facebook things, but he holding her down. You don't know what that child has done. Right? You don't know what kind of what she has done to, to create this situation. Some situations not warranted, but a lot of times it is warranted because our children will go off. They will go off. They would curse you out. They carry everything from the child of God. He said, how did you learn all the words? Were you around some sailors or something? <laughs> but that's the stuff. See, we talk about all the by and by in church. But we never tell people how really how to live on earth. We tell them how to get to heaven. But what about telling them how to live here? How to make things happen here? I know the Bible, we, we're going to heaven yet, but how, Pastor, how can I be successful here? How can I be a good father here? How can I be a good wife here? How can I treat my neighbor right here? <clears throat> See, we, we get all the, the great things about heaven, but what about living? Jesus spoke about the, 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 the people and fish he, Raise crops and the talents and all these things. You're talking about living here. If you don't know how to live here, you can't live in heaven. You got to learn how to live here, saints. You got to learn how to treat folks right now here. You can't cuss me out and expect me to get to heaven. You can't do me wrong and expect me to get to heaven. You walk by folks that you don't like, you don't say good morning, good evening, you don't shake the hand, you're in the house of God, you go to heaven. How are you going to get to heaven? You can't even speak to me down here. How can you speak in tongue and do all this and you can't even say hello to me? Oh yeah, we can speak in tongue all day long, but you can't speak nice to someone else. Something wrong with that picture. 
You got so much God in you, but you still you can't be nice. Something wrong with that picture. You got to learn to treat people right on earth, and we can get to heaven and say, and we got to learn down here to, when you come to the house of God, come in with thanksgiving and pray. Don't come in there mad with chipping your shoulder because the last two of you sit over here or sit there, and you should feel that way. This is God's house. This is not your house or my house. This is not the pastor's house. This is the house of a living God. Can anybody say amen? You should want to feel want people to come. You should want to respect folks when they come to those doors. I don't care how bad they may smell, how they may look, they may look. They are somebody. They are supposed to be respected and treated like somebody. Well, they don't look like church. I don't care what the church look like. Not like you. If you were a church person, you wouldn't act the way you act. Somebody give God a prayer. You need to know how to treat folks when they come to those doors. And then don't mind slide over. You know, we got some elderly people here, and they have a special place to sit. That's natural. Because they're supposed to be called, they have age, they can't move as fast as a young person. So you always want to accommodate your elderly people uh, so they can have a, a comfortable position. Amen, somebody. Amen. Because they have, they, they, they have of an age, and, and they need to have a space. And so they, if something happens, they can get out. Then I trap in because I'm supposed to run on top of you. You let something break out. Oh, big man, what I'm saying? Amen. So, so if we want them in a position they they can be in a safe place. And and, and young men, you should be able to. You see somebody trying to get up. You should be there to assist them, to help them. And and some women don't want to help. They leave me alone. I can I can make it. But see, that's your mind talking. My mind says you can get up. Sometimes my body says, not today. And I sit there back down. So, because, you know, when you, when you get up at 8, I'm 72. And, and, and sometimes I get ready to move, but I don't move as quick. My mind, I want to jump up, but I'll say, you know, I'm falling back down. So I let him take my time. Doc said, take your time, son. He said, you get up. And, and see, y'all be used to running and jumping. But when you get our age, you're going to be able to do it. You want somebody to give you a helping hand. I thought, look at Sister Simmons laughing. She don't, she don't want no help. That's right. You, you keep on living. You get there. Yeah, you, you keep on living. You get there. But you got you to pace yourself, saints. Look out for all the people. Look out for them. Don't, if you see them struggling, help them out. Open the door. Be kind. Be nice. So those things are important in the house of God. I, I, I notice how young people here, little John, the rest of them, they, they try to assist and help. That's a beautiful thing, saints. We need more men. We got Brother Hall, all the young people uh, on the ushers, and we got our, our brother, um, Junior, what's his name? Uh, Tyrone Junior, these young men, ushers, and doing stuff. That's beautiful. But see, train the children up. In the way they should go. We need young women to do the same thing. We got a few young people. But every young person needs to be on an usher board one time or another to see what it's all about. We just gonna start putting folks on the usher board, young people, helping out. Sister Gwen take care of the teacher. Because when the old ones move out, they're gonna need somebody to take their place. So Turner was out and and and, and uh so they can turn them. So the uh, whole communion went made this morning. We're going to run over here and be a dick Jimmy get that together. See, when somebody's out sick, if you need somebody, fill in. Dick Jimmy's not here, boom. You got different people doing different things. And wherever you need help, go move in there. I, I should have to do it. I'll do it. I don't mind doing it. But see, that's in your mind. Suddenly, it's Holy Communion Day. I got to get church. I get here early. If something ain't done, has not been done, I do it. I'm not going to let anything go back in this house. If the bathroom needs cleaning, I clean it. It don't make no difference. Because I'm not, I'm no more than you. I might have a different position, but if the toilet needs cleaning, I'm going to clean it. If the floor needs sweeping, I'm not the big time preacher. I'm just me. And, and if things are not right, I'm going to make sure it's right. Why? Because this is God's house. Amen. It's funny about praise. This is God's house. You should want to make God's house look beautiful. I thank God for the ones working. They're doing a great job. And 
But anyway, saints, sometimes when I come into church, if I smell something, I go straight to the main bathroom. I know somebody ain't flesh the thing here on And I clean it. Why? Because I don't want no guests to come in and smell anything that's not smelling well. I don't want the guests coming in and think that I'm looking proper. I want the house to look good. Amen? Amen. I don't want to look nice. I want the saints to look good. Amen. So these are the things that I want to share with you. I, didn't, I got one subject. But I want to show you how much I appreciate you. And I love you. And I want you to be better. I want you to have better. If I drive, whatever I drive, you can drive that or better. And if I have education, I want you to have a better education than I have. I want you to have a better job. I want things to be blossomed for you. But one thing about it, don't you forget the God that brought you. I didn't take my money and go somewhere else. I put my money in this ministry. I put my money in this ministry. I pay my tithes like you pay your tithes. I give money like you give money. I do all the things I need to do. And I'm not on salary. But God has blessed the saints they give me. They take care of me. They always do a nice thing for me. I appreciate that. But I drive my cars and hit, take people on trips. I drive my I don't worry about that. They don't have to put gas in. I love blessing God's people. Yeah. I love to see God's people blessed. Yeah. I love it. I brag on such things brag. I brag on the same. We have some beautiful in this ministry. Wonderful folks. Young people that are wonderful. Brother Isaiah, send Brother Isaiah. Come over here. This young man, he is a genius. I mean, literally a genius. What grade are you now, brother? Some grade he's in early college. He has got most of our league school, Harvard, Yale, Princeton, all of schools right and given. But see, the devil will come up here, son, and come a little closer. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. But the devil will like to stop you. That's right. He will love it. Because so many come to this ministry are eating out of garbage can. My, some people saw one of our members. It used to be member left. When he was very young. He was a scholar. Just got on drugs. Young man got on drugs and had been seen in Greensburg eating out of garbage cans. Pray him, and the devil stole his mind. Don't let it happen to you, young man. I'm not saying it will happen, but I'm giving you warning now because you got something to offer the kingdom of God. And he would love to mess your life up before you even get to stop it. All the dream and aspiration you might have will be lost by one mistake that you make. Don't take three or four. You don't give one chance to be like that a man of color. You get one opportunity to get it right. To get it right. One chance. And that's why, I'm, that's why I can tell you from experience. I went in the job for years ago in 1965 because I was hard-headed and wanted to go to school. But then she got two choices. Get on the garbage truck, go to work, or go to school. The band of candles was bigger than me. I went to the job for it. Went all the way to Montana, beauty building in Montana, went out right there to the job for it. Came back, went to the military. I took the hard road, then finally went to college. The easy road is to be obedient. The easiest road is to be subject. That those are, that's the easy road. It's hard out here, saints. It's hard out here. It's hard. You got parents don't care about their children. They leave on side of the street. You got parents don't care. Amen. And look at you look at you got nice clothes and everything you got going on, brother, but don't let the devil steal everything God has placed in you. Amen. I'm not saying you're doing anything. I'm just speaking to you. Because I know you got a lot to offer the kingdom. But don't let it happen. Don't let him other young folks. If you catch yourself, when I mean, you get frustrated, you always get frustrated with being angry, right? But catch yourself. So Lord, help me control me. Anybody been there? I always had her. 
But if you will be a willing and obedient, if you will humble yourself, sky is the limit. I took the hard road. I told my cousin, he's over world's largest system for Ford, Ford Motor Company. World. Not just one. You got men coming from China, India, working under him. I was going to school for computer technology. He's went to school for programming. I said, I ain't going to school for <laughs> I went the other way. He is probably a millionaire now. I could have been a millionaire if I had been, he was, he was married because he had, to, he had to do what he had to do. I was married so I was crazy. But see what I'm saying, it's like we are crazy when we're young, we do stupid stuff. Anybody do this stupid stuff beside me raise a hand? That's me, everybody in this building, we all do stupid stuff. All in this building have done some stupid stuff. Raise your hand again, be honest, now raise your hand. Don't lie in the house of God, we, we've all done some stupid stuff, right? But did God kill you? No. Did God cut you off from food to help and strip? No. Like my grandson, he always said no. But what he did, he taught us to teach our children don't make the same mistake. Where's the Lord? Come on down, brother. David's come on down. Come on down, David. That's my grandson. He's a first year college student. He found, he, he, he know, he's at the kitchen. He ain't seen him on hungry days, but he ever took it. He come to my house, he's looking for me. Papa, what you got to eat? Oh, he's tired of school. He'd be rattling through the cabin in his head. So when we went over there, I, I fixed a big hamburger. They weren't hungry, I fixed a big hamburger, some spaghetti, and boy, they ate everything. <laughs> Spent all their money to go to school, but they're hungry. <laughs> Pray these two young men, brother. God will touch their minds. God will touch their minds. You see, sometimes we need to speak to all of them. Amen.
we see someone his message is true, what difference? See, it's about 40 courses we go through, but it's real good. So if you don't have a test, let us know we'll get you a test. You can still be a job. I think it's very, uh, it's very, I'm going to give this to uh, Christy Boyd. Come get you so she, when she's at home. Just give you something to do. Give me some more coffee. Take the guy he is already. He keeps his, his studies at home. But it is very, very good. It took us uh, about two months to do one chapter. One chapter, it, it would take about two months to do one chapter. Because it's very extensive. Some of them are number one, but number two is what. We thank Brother Frank for getting these together. He gets all these together and he brings them to the ones that can't make it, he bring it to her. Sister Carter, she is uh, one of our students. Mother calls it every Wednesday. She didn't like it at first. Mother Carter, you stand and tell the day about it. How old you are, how long you been doing this? But she is one of our best students, and she's over 80, so I can tell how old she is. But she's one of our best students. She's here every Wednesday, so you can't talk about your age. She is faithful to this class. What she, you learn, Sister Neil, she's coming and faithful in our classes. Amen. She wants to see our seniors. Now, some of you gonna be, I think, if you ever did less than one, uh, it's kind of, it's, it's, see, less than one had three phases. You probably get more less than one. section but it, it kind of if, if, if you don't really if you don't have chapter one you'll be kind of lost uh, you, if you want to get caught from chapter one uh, we had to get to it but you got chapter one continue and continue you had three phases of that but it, it kind of give you a whole overview of uh, what's coming in chapter 2. When Dick and Charlie, he came up with this idea about chapter, about Revelation, then he took off. <laughs> but he been studying at home. But it, uh, uh, it is, very, it, we have enjoyed, we finished the book of Daniel, we finished the book of Malachi, and the Revelation, and we have really enjoyed uh, doing this. It's been great. Thank God for it. Okay, we're gonna let you go. Thank God for all those that come out to be with us. Thank God for our visitors. Uh, you know, just everything they want to say. You know, what king was invited? This coming first time. He states your name.
Otherwise, you don't tell that either. <laughs> Pretty. So that's what's going back to table. And what else? That's all standing. Thank you, brother. Uh, this is uh, one of the twins' grandson. Martin. Martin. What's, what's, what's your mother's name? Ella. Ella. Y'all remember Ella May? Ella Ray? Uh -huh. That's brother Candace's grandson. Uh -huh. yeah. Ms. White, good to have y'all. They all, they all was babies and come to the church. And he, he, he's a fine young man. He's a fine young man. God has blessed him. See, that's what I love. I love to see young men of color with their families, their babies, take care of their children. I have nothing more to do. I mean, anytime I see a young man having his wife and baby, they just, I had to speak to him. I said, thank God for you taking care of your family. It hurts me when I see women trying to go to work, carrying babies, I mean, I mean literally walking, carrying a baby one arm and trying to get to a job. You see the uniform on. Man, nowhere around to assist. You get in the back and get a baby, but it takes a man to raise a baby and feed his family. Amen. Thank God. Thank God for all men. Give, give this young man a like big hand. I love to see the young men. See, so we teach people how to go to heaven, but we don't teach people how to live on earth. Amen? We need more young men mentoring young men. Amen. Let us all stand. Thank God for Sister Black when she made it official. She belonged to Jesus, and then she married to the Lord. That's the best man to be married to, because he's going to feed you, he's going to clothe you, and he won't be no black eye. <laughs> Amen. Amen. John Haley was somebody beside you. John Haley. John Haley. Father God, in the name of Jesus, that we, this hand that we hold, this hand, this hand that I'm holding. I want you to work a miracle to speak with this hand that I'm holding. I want some mighty and great things with this hand that I'm holding. I want this hand that I'm holding. Bodies to be healed. Bodies to be touched. This hand that I'm holding, that the families would be well. This hand that I'm holding, that the jobs would increase, multiply. Let bless them right now. This hand that I'm holding, Lord God. Let everything touch, Lord, be blessed. Everybody go be blessed. This hand that I'm holding, let it be mighty in the kingdom of God. This hand that I'm holding, Lord God, let it be a weapon against the devil. This hand that I'm holding, Lord God, let them be more than they ever thought they would ever be in life, Lord God. This hand that I'm holding, let them be holy, let them be righteous, let them be godly. This hand that I'm holding. Amen.